that means that we just about six x star earnings we also have this super cool custom helium bot that we use to manage my hotspots to let me know when they're down and when they're up i paid a true climber 250 dollars to install my 5.8 dbi antenna on top of this tree now this could be a great example for you so that you can leverage the height around you when you're doing your installation now i'm going to show you really quickly what i did in the install that way you can do something like it or maybe you can do something better i'm also going to show you what i used along with little tips and tricks that can help you out along your install at the end of the video we're going to show you the new results four days in to see if, if any of this was worth it now the total upgrade cost me about four to five hundred dollars with parts and labor so without further ado let's get into the video and as always guys thank you so much for watching click the like and the subscribe if you appreciate this kind of content let's roll <laughs> We used a Bobcat Miner, the power over ethernet setup including 150 foot and one 200 foot ethernet cable, a 5 foot metal pole to act as a base for our antenna, the 5.8 dvi antenna, 3 feet of LMR 400 from Rockland, and for weatherproofing we used a waterproof outdoor enclosure, electrical tape, vulcanizing tape, and some rooftop caulk for any ceiling or openings in the box that we made. And lastly, 60 feet of 3 8 inch conduit. So here's my cable path. We put the power over ethernet injector inside of the attic and then we ran the ethernet cable out through the garage. So big tip if you're new to this, always follow the same cable paths that are already made. In the middle of the install, we realized that I needed more ethernet cables. I had to order 25 feet more of cable and I attached it to the injector and then I just ordered this ethernet coupler so I can connect both cables back together. Make sure that when you're weatherproofing your antenna, you take your time and do a good thorough job. You don't wanna take the chances of maybe having to go back up there or just damaging your equipment overall. Triple check all connections and seals because you only get one shot at this once it goes up. Now one thing I use is I use a metal weight and some fishing wire to fish the ethernet cable through the conduit because it was a snug fit but it will fit. Give yourself plenty of time so that way you can have everything ready to go so that way when the people get here you could just have them take the antenna straight up. Another big thing is make sure that you communicate exactly what you want them to do. Be as detailed as you can. These guys have no clue what we're doing here so they have no clue if the antenna needs to be horizontal facing towards the sky or facing towards the city so be very thorough what you explain to them trust me i had a hard time explaining and communicating when the guy was already 150 feet in the air and it was just a big hassle and it took us a lot longer the biggest lesson though guys is safety like this dude is up there and i'm pretty sure captain america and thor are having a battle in like the neighborhood next to us so it's the windiest day in america right now and this guy dropped the hammer twice on us Luckily, no one got hurt make sure that you are not under the working situation and you give him the appropriate tools with the safety precautions you need like if he's carrying a hammer up make sure the hammer is tied to his waist if he's carrying a drill up make sure it's tied to his waist that way even if it drops from his hand it will not come crashing down on someone's skull not to be funny but we did have a close call and definitely guys i don't want anyone getting hurt when you're doing something like this now this is before it's all nice and cleaned up so we've got the ethernet running out of the garage and we have this flexible conduit which i do not recommend because it's super hard to get the ethernet cable through and then i have this rigid conduit right here then i just told the dude to hammer the cables together onto the tree with these little staples that came with the ethernet cable but you can just easily buy these staples from Home Depot. They're not actually called staples. I'm pretty sure they're called like cable clips, but whatever. Feel free to drop it down in the comment section of what these things are actually called. Now the whole enclosure is up there and it's so high. I can barely see it with my camera, but you can barely see a flicker of it up there, but it's up there. So now let's finish this up. I have never done this before, but if I can do it, you can do it. This was the most tedious part, the most difficult part, because I had to break through some roots. So if you're doing a tree install and you're burying it like me, then yeah, that's going to get in the way. Uh, there's really nothing stopping you from achieving what I'm doing here. I really do hope that any of this motivates you and helps you achieve what you want to achieve. That being said, there are tons of videos on YouTube to help you learn how to do this properly. Once you're all done with this, which I promise is the most tedious part, then you're good to go. All you have to do now is just put the dirt back together and you're good. Okay, finally home. Let's see what these antennas go. I'm gonna look at my screen for the first time. I'm gonna check these out on the Explorer and see how many new witnesses we have. Four hours gone by, 36 witnesses so far. Okay, 13 hours in and we have 0.56 so far in the day. All right, so I do recommend that you wait about a week until this number, the total witnesses becomes finalized because I still have mine jumping around between seven and 10 days after I do my total install. I think this is really low for what we're working with. We are super high in the air. There's literally nothing in front of us. I think that the installation guys put the antenna right in front of this tree trunk. So that's why I'm not getting any witnesses right here. And I should be getting some witnesses right here. There's no way why I shouldn't. All right, so we're just over 24 hours. We're at the 26 hour mark and we are at 0.88. So almost 0.9. H and T in one day. I mean, it's almost one whole H and T in a day. So that's actually really good. And we have about 52 witnesses here. Overall, I'm pretty happy with what I did. But given that I spent approximately about 400 to 500 dollars, I should be making this money back within 20 days. That's not bad at all. Now, if I hop over here to Hotspotty, I click on witnesses. 
I see that I have 56 witnesses so far. I'm not sure which one's faster, which one's more updated, but I'm gonna go with this one just because it makes me feel better. How big of an increase did we just make this? All right, let's check it out. So 0.19, 0.15, 0.16, 0.24. So given the fact that their medium right now is about 0.16 HNT a day, that means that we just about 6 X star earnings and that's kind of highballing it, but more or less that's gonna be where we're at. Again, these are 24 hour results, so we can't really base everything off of this, but we can justify if what we did worked or not. And wait at least 10 days before thinking about your results being stabilized. Almost five days in, 83 witnesses, and we have this witness over here. I'm basically like reaching Wakanda with this one. Looks like we're stabilizing between the 0.6 and 0.65 range, but these are only four days in, and I forgot to do the uh, relay fix because we switched from Wi-Fi to Ethernet, so I'll be doing that as soon as I get a chance. So I have this idea about this new video that I want to come out with and it all depends on what you guys think about it and I thought about making a, uh, a video just about how I do this whole helium hotspot business every single installation was funded by all of the funds that the antennas made uh, so I just snowballed it and uh, each antenna started making more and more therefore I was able to upgrade the antennas faster and faster if you guys are interested in hearing like how I did all this and uh, maybe how you can do something better. I know that I personally am not the most experienced and I'm not probably the I'm probably not the best qualified for this. I only have eight hotspots right now. I am trying to expand. But if you guys are interested in hearing something like this, I can come up with a thorough video of what it's like for me day in, day out, and how I went about getting eight locations for my hotspot, how to deal with failure in the business, and how to plan for longevity. Uh, if you guys are interested in something like that, drop a comment down below. If I get enough comments about this video and, and if I feel like there is actual true demand, I will make this video for sure. It'll take me some time, but I'll make it super thorough for you guys. We also have this super cool custom Helium bot that we use to manage my hotspots to let me know when they're down and when they're up. As far as other bots that are out there, some of them just take way too long to notify you that your hotspot is down. So we went ahead and made our own. All the credit goes to my friend and business partner, Andrew. Andrew's a freaking genius. So I'm super excited to bring this to you guys. If you're watching this down the road and it's already been some time for this video to come out, the link will be down below so you guys can get in on this and use this tool to manage your business. But that being said, I appreciate you guys being here as always i am so glad that i can bring you guys any kind of content for you that you can absorb and really use this to boost yourself boost your boost your healing business and uh, really just make the best of it so thank you guys i appreciate you don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you in the next video